times the father had no clue he was the dad on paternity court. Mr. Long, do you remember Miss Harms bringing Miss Robinson to see you and saying this is your father? Have you ever seen Miss Robinson? No, ma'am. That brain is old. All of this happening, like everything was happening so fast. One day she tell me about him, the next day sending the man picture. I don't know this man. I never heard about him. Mr. Bryant is summoned to the court for a paternity test of a girl he had no idea existed. Mr. Bryant, when was the first time you heard about Miss Garcia? about Monica? Uh, it was about four months ago. Wow. So you didn't know you had a daughter no, I didn't. until four months ago. Yes, ma'am. And she's 24. Yes. So I miss a lot of time if I am her father. And this is how we found out about Monica. So take me to that day. How did you find out? What happened? I was on Facebook one day, strolling in there, you know, on a part where they say people you should know. I ran into, you know, this face. I decided to reach out to her. We started communicating then. Entire the conversation, Mr. Concentration, she comes out and she's just like, I have your daughter. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Talk like, about people you should know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a bombshell, I must say. <laughs> yes, you should know them. So, Miss Sanchez, I want you to take me to that moment. When I saw someone request me, I looked, my eyes grew as big as this world, <laughs> and my heart just sank. And I said, he found me. At that moment, I messaged Monica, saying, Timothy has found me. Your father has found me. This is how the long-lost failed lovers met. One day, he was talking to me in the phone. He was very upset, and he came in and picked me up and took me to his house. We were together for about two months. One day he left. I just packed up and, and I No, left. no, wait. I didn't leave. I you, left the house. Well, you went out. <laughs> okay. you know, I don't know okay. where you went. <laughs> Miss Sanchez was already pregnant. When I went to a gynecologist, I was already two or three months pregnant. And at that time, I was with my ex. I had let my ex know there's a possibility that the baby may not be yours. But we both vowed to each other that we would bring, give Monica a mother and a father and bring her up as good parents. And that's what we did. Though it was very noble of another man to help raise Monica, still, it messes things up for the poor girl. He did that DNA test, I'm thinking, well, there's no point. It's gonna come back. It came back that he wasn't. And that's when I found out and he found out. And, and just, how did that change your relationship with this man? It changed it dramatically. He went from being my best friend to him not even giving me a phone call. It was like, they all just dropped me. Oh. I don't talk to none of them. So let's get down to sorting things out. When was Monica born? She was born February 28th. Say you were two to three months pregnant in June. That don't add up. That's what the doctor told me. I don't know. Yeah, that's like a year. Your window of conception would have been around the end of June, early July. I saw that, Monica. <laughs> This just doesn't add up. Mr. Bryant, you've heard this testimony. You have looked at me, tried to do this math that won't add up. What are you feeling? Well, like I said, it don't add up, for one. Um, <laughs> and it's sad because you know, she's lost here, not knowing who her dad is. From the way it looks like it, I'm not, you know, from the way it looks. So, I mean, she's still lost. Fingers crossed. We really hope the result brings bliss for Monica. In the case of Sanchez Garcia versus Bryant, when it comes to 24-year-old Monica Garcia, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Bryant, you are the father. <laughs> The paternity court has tackled down Miss Manship's potential father, who she will meet for the first time. Miss Manship, at the age of 10, you were shocked and devastated to learn that your dad was not your biological father. That began your 20 year search to find the man your mother claims is your father. This will be the first time meeting him and your mother's first time seeing him since they broke up more than 30 years ago. As a young girl, Miss Manship believed another man was her father. Up until I was 10, I believed that my brother's father was my father. And then they had a DNA test done and it came back that he was not my father. And that made him really angry. So he stopped letting me come over to his house. And you remember this rejection? I do. After that episode, her mother confessed to another man being her father. She had one picture and this is the one picture that she gave me that I've had for the past 20 years. And I just look at it and she says, this 
is who your father is. He was the only other person I was with, and he's just, he's the only one that it could be. So her search for a real father began. I would go to the state that she told me he was from, which was Little Rock, Arkansas. I would go in there and I'd mention his name and say, you know, does anybody know this man? I believe he is my father and I've been searching for him. Nobody ever had any information they could give me. Um, we even went back and to And all you had to go on was this one photo you the had? The one picture and the one name. All of her efforts went in vain. Let's hope today this trial will end her search. When the court contacted me just recently. You never knew she existed. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. But you did have a relationship with Ms. Lutman, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. You remember that? 30 years. I have to yes. ask you, is this you in this photo? Yes, Your Honor. So we know we at least have the right Mr. Lau. You had no idea this young woman had been looking for you for 20 years? No, Your Honor. This revelation was dire for the defendant, too. Miss Manship, Mr. Lau, how hard you searched for him. Will you tell him how long you've been looking? I've searched online, I've asked people, and I've never had a response from anybody in the past 20 years. Nobody has ever given me even a single detail of where he's from or where he lives. If he has any family, I don't know anything. And you've never gotten one lead? Not one. After Mr. Lop testified about their relationship, we got to the point where things got messed up for them. He said he had to get back to Arkansas and take care of business. Me and my ex got back together, and about a month later, I started getting symptoms of getting pregnant. And I was with my ex, so I figured it was my ex's baby. So we just continued all the way up until I had her. So you, when you found out you were pregnant, you thought it was your ex's child? Yes. However, we don't do things that are simple down here in paternity court, do we? Were you with any other men during the window of conception. No, Your Honor. Mr. Laup, do you remember why or how your relationship with Ms. Lutman ended? I believe, Your Honor, we had to get together at the apartment and, uh, and I believe I walked in the bedroom and both of them were crashed out in the bedroom. So you broke up with her, but you stayed around town for another six months? Yes. Nonetheless, Mr. Laup told the court another reason for his doubt. Several times, and you've never had children with any of your wives? No, Your Honor, I actually thought I was shooting blanks all the time. Not ever hearing about Ms. Manship, not ever speaking to Ms. Lutman, never being told by Ms. Lutman that you're potentially her daughter's father, and you've been married to different women and never fathered a child. No, Your Honor. Well, I think Ms. Manship has waited long enough for the truth. Let's give it to her. In the case of Manship Lutman versus Lau, when it comes to 30-year-old Tanya Manship. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Lau, you are the father. <laughs> Ms. Cooper has kept paternity a secret for too long, but now she's done with it. Ms. Cooper, you say you held the secret for just too long and you felt your son deserved to know that Mr. Newby is his father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Newby, you were stunned by the news that you may be the father to a child you had never met and you're in court today to defend your belief that you are not his dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The potential father bomb dropped on Mr. Cooper like this. I get a call about 3 o'clock in the morning. My mama called and told me that uh, the person she told me was my daddy and well, my father that this gentleman was and to go online and look him up. And this is what your mother tells you? Yes. What are you thinking? All kind of things. I mean, she was like, don't be mad at her or whatever. A lot of things ran through my mind. What? I thought it was a joke, actually, honestly. I thought she was playing. Because that was so far outside of your realm of thinking. Yeah. No one wants to give such news, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Right? You kept this secret yes. for 34 years. Yes, Your Honor. Why keep a secret for 34 years? I was very young, a teenager, when this all happened. Like, me and Mr. Newby, we were very good friends back then. If I told my parents that Mr. Newby was Dante's dad, then I thought, being a kid, that we wouldn't be able to be friends anymore or play it together anymore. It's like I didn't want to get Mr. Newby in trouble feel really bad for the mama. I didn't know what pregnancy was. And then I had a teenage friend that was pregnant at the, also at the time. And she was kind of the one that told me that, that she thought I might be pregnant too. When you become pregnant, you don't even know. Yes, she Because you don't know any, you don't experience the changes in your body. You don't even know what's going on. And it was another friend of yours that was also a teen that says, I think you're pregnant too. Yes, and she was pregnant. 
Miss Cooper's mother circled down the wrong father. I'm sure she asked you who the father was. It was another. She just knew me and Mr. Newby to be just as friends, but this other guy I went to the dance with, she just assumed that he was the father. She said it and you did not contradict her or you never mentioned Mr. Newby. No, Your Honor. This is the man that your son Dante, Mr. Cooper, believes is his biological father. Yes. Mr. Newby had missed the plaintiff's whole childhood and only found out about him recently. My messenger popped up and I looked on there and it said, you're not gonna believe this, this is your child, real talk, and with a picture of Dante on it. And I said, what? And then I texted her back and she didn't say nothing. And I said, you can't drop a bombshell on me like that and don't elaborate. And I waited until she finally responded. And then I said, does he know this? I said, because how could I be the father? I never seen you pregnant. So you never knew she was pregnant? I never seen her pregnant. Well, the defendant had doubts about being the father. All of you all were young teens experimenting with sex. Yes, Your Honor. Unprotected because at that time, we didn't have no as much talk protected. about safe sex and stuff right. like that. So you're saying that there was also a sexual relationship between Miss Cooper and another family member of yours? I don't remember that. Mr. Cooper had no relationship with the other man either. How did that affect you growing up? Man, it played its part. Got off the porch a little, you know what I'm saying? So when you say you got off the porch a little early, I think that means when you are a kid, you're supposed to stay on the porch. That's where you're supposed to be safe. You're not out in the streets. So meaning you got off the porch and you said you were in the streets a little early. Yeah. Did you get in trouble as a kid? Yes, a whole bunch of them. Mr. Newby was drained by the whole situation. He had my father. He had my brother. But he didn't have me if I yeah, was daddy. Yeah, and I understand that too. Him. Yes, that I understand it. And I can see that this hurts you, sir. Now it do. I feel like I stole something from you and Dante. That's why I weighed so heavy and I couldn't hold it any longer. He expressed himself like this. It's a lot to process, isn't it, Mr. Newby? Ooh, you never get to know what a great man my, my father was. It's kind of hit me a little. It's all right. I mean, I, I think- I more missed out on all of that stuff. And so now it's like hit me. I'm just thinking about how my dad would have loved him, how he, Oh, I would love my dad. I just, and now it's kind of hurt real bad. Let's see if Mr. Newby is called in for false paternity or not. In the case of Cooper versus Newby, when it comes to 34 year old Dante Cooper, it has been determined by this court Mr. Newby, you are not the father. Miss Robinson is back with her mom with the same question, and we hope this time things will turn out all right for her. Miss Robinson, you're back in court today because you say your mother, Miss Harms, has continued to commit eternity fraud. She's now claiming her ex-boyfriend, Mr. Long, is your biological father, but you believe she's lying. Yes. The mom was sure that Mr. Long was the real father. Miss Harms, who her father is? Mr. Long, Your Honor. Why would she not want to believe you if she's looking for her father? I don't know why she wouldn't believe me. Because but he lied a lot. I know I have not lied. That was just luck that no, he wasn't, wasn't my father. Luck. It wasn't luck. It was luck. It wasn't luck. Yes, it was. You can't just look at a person because that was your boyfriend. You guys gray hair and assume that's your father. The judge gave the plaintiff the chance to speak her heart out. Let her speak, Miss Harms, and then okay. I will let you speak. Um, me in school, never nobody showed up to my games, sitting there, all my friends got parents there, I have nobody. I had a baby at 18 and one at 20, it has, it has not been a day that I have not been there for my children a thousand percent. And I know who their fathers is because I wasn't promiscuous and nobody could talk me out of my panties. Miss Robinson's testimony stung her mother at the defendant's podium real hard. Maybe she choose a better choice of words talking to me. What? Something? Because every time Hold I on, let her respond, let her respond. I let her respond. Let her respond. Respond. You who my See, dad is. Neither one of you let the other one get a word in. That's and right. that's why we're not getting that's anywhere. Right. What's upsetting you right now in this moment? The fact that she said your lies. What, and what lies is she her. telling? If I didn't raise her, she wouldn't have or be who she is today. The defendant was quite disrespectful toward her mother. But your relationship with your mother. Yes. And like you said, we you have, have children. One. That's their grandmother. We don't yes. have one. That's your fault, though. No, it ain't. She get mad at me. She won't let me see my granddaughter's or my great grandson. You never that's let me see my daddy, you. though. You I never saw my grandparents. You're 37 years old. I didn't it's even hear old. about him until I was 10. What, you like you couldn't have went? I told you, you always knew who your dad was. Where was I gonna you knew go we and And Mr. Long, on the other hand, had no recollection of the defendant. Mr. Long, do you remember <laughs> Miss Harms bringing Miss Robinson to see you and saying this God is your that. father? Have you ever seen Miss Robinson? No, ma'am. Did I you think you were her family. biological father? It was possible because, you know, it was it was said, and then she sent a picture to my mom of Your Honor, I've sent, gave him, Mr. Long, nine photos of her. And the defendant 
did not like this statement. You said you brought the baby over to yes, the house. Yes, ma'am. Every time we went down, every summer, to visit my grandma and papa. I don't recall that, Jill. Uh, no, because that brain is old. And you would bring the baby, <laughs> so you would come see him? Yes, Your Honor. And his family? Yes, Your Honor. Walk right in the kitchen, they cooking up collard greens and everything. Turns out that Mr. Long was never on the potential father's list. You've been given various names, but never, never Mr. Long. Long. I've never heard of Mr. Long. Did Even you Mr. think Long, about Mr. Long? Did I think about him? Yeah, I always wondered. Hmm, I wonder if he does look like me. But of course, I couldn't get any contact. Right. But you said you were caught up in a web because every other man in your life was claiming <laughs> you as something. Yes. This is confusing. Well, there's only one way to sort this. In the case of Robinson versus Long, when it comes to 36-year-old Jennifer Robinson, it has been mm. determined by this court. Mr. Long, you are her father. <laughs> Elsie, oh. I told you, I love you so much. Miss Lawrence's real father is standing outside the courtroom waiting to see his daughter for the first time. You claim that six months ago, your mother, the defendant, shared a secret she'd kept from you your entire life. After 28 years believing one man was your biological father, you have petitioned the court for a paternity test to find out if the man waiting outside of our courtroom today is indeed your biological father. But Miss Simmons realized this truth herself only a few days ago. Miss Simmons, you admit to keep Keeping a lifelong secret from your daughter. You claim you recently ran into an ex-lover on a bus. Uh, you say that for the very first time, you told this man that he could be your daughter's dad. The big, awkward truth got out like this. How your mother revealed her 28-year secret to you. She called me about six months ago. She was hysterically crying, and um, I'm asking her, what's wrong, what's wrong? She's beating around the bush, telling me all these random stories, and then and finally she goes into saying that she met some random man on the bus and that he could possibly be my father. Mommy told a cumbersome bus story to the court. I ran into Rudy on the bus one day on the way from school and I'm like, I know him, you know, from my past. I've never forgotten him. I say, excuse me, what is your name? Is your name Rudolph? He says, yes it is. He asks me, who are you? And I look at him like this, I'm like, for real, really? And I'm like, I'm Yvette. <laughs> we exchange phone numbers and it says, call me later. Ms. Simmons? Why wait so long to spill something like this? You held this secret by yourself all these years? Actually, I wasn't even really sure because me and her dad had broken up. When I went back home and got with her dad, I uh, found out like I was almost three months pregnant. But once you realized you were pregnant, you knew in your mind that you were not certain who your daughter's father was. So the defendant had this excuse up her sleeves. I never thought I would see him again. But that's what I want to know too. Like, even still, if you didn't see See him like I mean, why bring up somebody that's not there he was non-existent if you hadn't run into him on this bus this was a done deal for you you were gonna go to your grave with your daughter thinking and that's exactly what she said and how does that make you feel that that's that's deep miss lawrence was not ready to put up with any of this with all of this happening like everything was happening so fast one day she tell me about him the next day sending the man picture i don't know this man i never heard about him rude rocky what Rudolph, I don't know him. Now, let's get the bus guy in. Mr. Rockmore, take me to the day that you ran into Miss Simmons on the bus. I had got on the bus and she was sitting across from me and I was looking at her and I was looking, cause she was looking good. And then I was looking, I, say, I was saying to myself, well, she got some beautiful lips. And... Not knowing you had already <laughs> been there, done that. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Exactly. The potential father had this take on the whole situation. We changed numbers and I got off and she had called me and we talked for a while. She had something to tell me. She said, I might have a daughter. Then she told me she was 28 years old and I was like, wait a minute, that's a long time. You know, that's a lot of time lost out of a kid's life. When we uh, separated, I used to come back by her mom's house and, and, you know, just see if I could see her out or anything, but I guess they had moved. And... Only the truth can set us free. So let's get on to that. In the case of Lawrence versus Simmons, when it comes to 29-year-old Shatika. Mr. Rockmore, you are her father. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh. 